with Carl Baker, who's exhibiting with Liverpool Street Gallery. He's got a beautiful exhibition of abstract paintings. Um, so you've got a suite of, I suppose, three main bodies of work in this exhibition, the grids and the stripes. Would you like to talk through a little bit about the different types of work that you're exhibiting at the fair? Well, the stripes is my last body of work and which is conceptualized on the idea I do vertical lines with horizontal brush strokes. So basically all my work has been occupied with quite a lot of my work has been occupied with lines and I discovered there are different approaches to a line. You can draw a line, you can make a line, you can construct a line or in this case I have let a line occur. So basically the vertical lines you see, they're basically how the brush works ended and that created basically the sharp edge of a line. And, um, and with the other, the grid paintings, they come from a time when I basically had only painted and I realized, oh, maybe I start drawing as well. So I referred to the most universal drawing, which is a grid, and had been used in minimalist art a lot. But for me, the minimalist approach was always a bit serious. And so I wanted to add a bit of a humorous side to it, which had the consequence that I established small squares all over the plane in different angles, and then extending the squares till they met and drawing the lines too. But then, I'd, after I had done my first, I called them then drawings, and the art gallery of Western Australia, they bought a big two by three meter work of that, which was called drawing. And when that work traveled to other galleries for an exhibition, they always dimmed the light, because traditionally they exhibit drawings in dimmer light. And I thought, no, this can't go on. Yeah, and so I called them just paintings. So my, the initiative for those works was really doing a drawing, yeah. And, um, yeah. And, and process is obviously incredibly important to you. And yes. For some time. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, why process is so important to your practice? Well, for me, the key words in my practice are, are material and process. And uh, basically that stems from, I mean, I've been painting all my life, basically. I did landscape portraits, all this classical stuff, till I basically came to the point that I asked myself, what am I doing here? And when I started analyzing painting and the process of painting, and that happened basically in the early 70s. And in the early 70s in Europe, there was a movement going on analytical painting, mostly Dutch, Italian. French, Germans, and so that was basically, uh, in that period of time, I basically woke up to be, become aware of what I'm doing. Yeah. So, and I had a very analytical attitude towards painting. And within that context, I realized, so people call my work abstract, it's not really abstract. Because an abstract work is usually an abstraction of something. In my work, I only refer to the three means of painting, which is the paint, the instrument, and the ground. And usually from body to work, from body of work to the next body of work, that changes based on creating different possibilities between these three means. Yeah. I'm quite surprised to hear that you were a landscape and portrait painter back in the day. I have been, yeah, but not anymore. So I do a, I do small landscape drawings and portrait, oh, faces yes. and stuff. But anyway. So, um, can you talk a little bit more about the artists that, uh, that you were looking at when you were starting to think about these ideas? Like the, the well, ideas? well uh, I was very fortunate that I lived in a town in North Germany called Bremerhaven, and there was a small gallery established in 1968 called the Kabinett für die Kunst, which still exists, but this gallery basically developed to one of the leading European galleries. Basically, everybody exhibited there. Like Palermo had his first show in Bremerhaven outside of Düsseldorf. Ruth, uh, Polke had his first show there outside of Düsseldorf. Gerhard Richter, I mean, that's why I know all these people personally. Yeah? So they came, had a show, and looked at the space, 
as an opportunity to get out of their home ground and to something into some place nobody knew them where they had the freedom to be more experimental or yeah and then uh, I started studying art when I was 28 in Hamburg and I chose Hamburg because Polke was teaching there and oh, did you study with him? well I met him through this gallery and then I wanted to study with him that's why I went to that school but then he had left so uh, but then what happened was a year before Franz Ehard Walter he just came from New York and became professor at that school and uh, yes through some circumstances he invited me to his class and uh, which I did and that was the best thing what could have happened to me I mean he was a fantastic teacher a great person very inspirational and also the very supportive for my work and so the seeds were really sown by the time you moved to Australia because when, when did you move to Perth? Well, well, no, I think, uh, no, it's, well, I had two shows at this Kabinett für Aktuelle Kunst in Germany, and I was just starting basically also to make a living from my work, and then I moved to Australia. So I dropped all that, basically, and I'm also, I've been a trained goldsmith, so when I came to Australia to Fremantle, I started a gold and silver smithing workshop, just to have some income. But and then I started painting the sticks as well in the workshop. And then there was this uh, alternative gallery in Fremantle called Praxis. And they offered me two shows and where I showed the sticks the first time. And that had a quite a big impact. And that was a time also later when John Stringer and Betty Churcher, Betty Churcher was director of the Art Gallery of Western Australia and John Stringer the main curator. And then John Stringer discovered my work and bought quite a fair bit. And from then it started really Rolling, yeah. And why did you move to Perth in the first place? Well, we were a group, a group of artist friends. We, want, we all wanted to leave Germany. And there were different options like um, America was one, Australia was one, Canada was one. And uh, I don't know, three, four friends and I, we decided to go to Australia. And then I decided Fremantle just to get away from everything. Yeah. But the main reason to move to Australia was really I wanted to have space, being away from family and friends in Germany. And basically, space. Yeah, yeah. Because um, Australia is a very extreme environment. There aren't many people doing the process-based art that you're interested in, really. Yeah, I mean, when I came and I had, well, my gallerist, in Germany when I didn't tell him that I'm going for good to Germany I said I'm going to an extensive holiday and he said but there's no art in Germany and Australia yeah and I felt also like especially being a Fremantle I was looking around looking around and then I found an art magazine with a reproduction of John Nixon's work yes. and then I said oh at least there's somebody I can connect to and relate to and later on we became also good friends and we traveled to America and uh, yeah and we are still good friends and so, uh, I don't know, I've been also very fortunate being in Australia, somehow I met always the right people or have been at the right place at the right time and yeah, it was, well, all, all over I can say I'm, have, I'm a very fortunate person really. <laughs> so, that helped. And uh, I suppose we've been painting now for 45 years, so yeah. thereabouts, and all the time pushing this what painting is and can be. Yes. Do you feel like you've come any closer to an answer? Yeah, well, well, it's not so much about what painting can be, but, I mean, f well, I work in different bodies of work to avoid the signature style, which I think you can easily become the victim of. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to keep my freedom. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I think that's the basic line. It's all made up, yeah, anyhow. Yeah. So, and in doing that, I, each body of work I created was for me another possibility to extend the language of painting. Yeah. It was not so much that, was, uh, that I was interested in painting per se, I was interested in making painting which haven't been done before. Yes. Yeah. For instance, some uh, like these grid paintings, 
when I started them, and I did also quite big ones, yeah, I, uh, one reason doing those was because nobody else would do it. So, and I took this position, okay, then I'm the one who does what nobody else would do. I mean, nobody has the patience to do fine lines over a year on one painting or so. Yeah. Or some of my thicker paintings, some took 10 years or so. Yeah. Yes, well, I mean, the, the perseverance on your part is huge. Was yeah. there a series of work where you, you painted them over years outdoors? Yes, yes, yes. And then I realized, oh, that can be a trap as well, uh, working on a work for 10 years or so. So the aspect of speeding up became an important aspect in my praxis. Yeah. So, and that was always a driving force. How can I make a contribution to painting quickly? Yeah. And so with the last one, the stripes, that I got very close to that. Yeah. So in a way, my praxis has developed speed-wise and also being more focused on the no meaning, emptiness and these issues. Yeah. And yeah, and well and then I listen to other painters what they have to say and to my painters when I'm usually listening to everybody what this person says about painting. Yeah. I like I like also the layman's comment and and in the same sense, it's also, I like my work to be accessible for, any, for anybody and the specialist as well. You know? And not just for specialists or academics, but also for somebody who has no idea. And I had the response like that. People who have no clue of art or painting are fascinated. You know? I mean, for me, and painting is really a partner in a dialogue, and ideally in a dialogue which never ends. And so, speaking of never ending, what's, what's next for you? Do you get time for a rest after the Melbourne Art Fair? Or you no, I'm, I'm uh, concentrating on those uh, vertical lines, yes. but uh, I'm getting a bit more open and more... Also, I want to do bigger sizes again and be a bit so-called wilder and more, even more adventures around it. And, uh, and so, and again, expanding the colours I'm using Generally, I'm using all colors, yeah, except black. Except red. Black. Black. I use black only a little for darkening colors, but it's not a part of my palette or so. I mean, um, like for John and myself, painting should be uplifting. Art should be uplifting and should have nothing to do with the street or anything out there. It's related to painting and yeah, giving a new, well, giving painting new possibilities. And also, I mean, I've been recently an um, artist in residence at the School of Art in Canberra. Oh, yeah. And so uh, when I teach, I really encourage students to develop their own language. You can do what you want. Nobody tells you. Just what out, watch out that you don't become the victim of your own rules. Yeah. Which is very important, I think. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, and I think also painting should be enjoyable, the act of painting, yeah. which is... An enjoyable exhibition. Yeah, yeah. And I enjoy, I mean, I came to a point where also painting to paint became a bit work-like. And yeah, I got out of that slump and I enjoy it fully again now. Yeah. And so it's good. All right. Good luck. Thank, thank you. For, for making your time. Thank you. Great, thank you. Yes, thank you.